I'm Jörg von Stein. I'm an art historian and a restorer. I came here in 1993 because um, my father's family is from here. I grew up all over the world and um, I just finished university and was at a loss of where to go. And the wall had just come down and I just thought it was an interesting place to go to. You could come to the east and um, you found incredible empty spaces. Half of East Berlin seemed to be vacated and abandoned. And people just came there and used these buildings and you had no legal situation. That was the interesting thing about Berlin. This is um, so typical of what I love about Berlin. Megalomania attracting strange amateurs to fulfill their dreams here. This was built by the same architect that built the Brandenburg Gate, who was self-taught. Most of his buildings here collapsed, in fact. It's the earliest anatomical theater in Germany, based on Palladio's Villa Rotunda, but it's sort of somehow never quite right. The proportions aren't right. These strange um, ox skulls, bull skulls on it are completely wrong. And the setting is amazing. We're in the middle of town. It's been abandoned. It used to be the veterinary faculty. It's full of fabulous buildings that are falling into disrepair. And there's no concept of what to do with it. Now, we've just walked into the annex of this anatomical theater. And this is obviously where they used to keep the corpses. So there, we've still got the original hooks where they hang all these animal corpses by. Of course, Germans have this warped sense of history. Most of the recent history has not exactly been sexy. So the Germans want to obliterate as much as they possibly can about history here. Um, at the moment, there's this witch hunt out to eradicate anything that's left over from communist East Germany. I personally am interested in the layers and the different layers that everybody leaves here. Seeing the scars of war, I mean, sometimes you, you still see bullet holes in the rendering of a building, and then you have um, somebody who added something in the 1960s. I think that is really beautiful. And you should see how, how a building has evolved and how a city has evolved. Now we've arrived in Potsdamer Straße, in a former print works and an editorial office of one of the major regional newspapers. They had to sell the buildings because they'd fallen on dire times. And now this is turning into one of the hotspots for the Berlin art scene. Potsdamer Straße since the 1920s had a reputation as a red light kind of district. And Andreas Mokudis, where we are at the moment, was one of the very first people to move into this, literally into the printing workshop here, and turn this into an, of course, an amazing fashion and design emporium. English, needless to say, it's Bringle, and it's called, the collection is called Serpentine Gallery. I must admit, I do love this store and come here occasionally to just browse around. Berlin is so improvised normally and nobody has any money. So sometimes it makes you yearn for just something a bit more stylish. He sells furniture, children's games, um, crockery, whatever you would want that takes your fancy. Everybody cycles in Berlin. So the cycle seems to be turned into an interesting status symbol. And the more austere your bike, the more you're part of the scene. We saw some people cycling past on a cycle that was made up of second-hand parts and without gears. That's the kind of cycle you're supposed to be driving around in today. Now this is Neues Kreuzberger Zentrum which was um, a slum clearance project, believe it or not. Utopian 1970s architecture that was later considered to be a failure by the town planners. But I think it's the opposite. It just looks amazing, as if a spaceship has landed on Earth. It is teeming with life, so I'm not quite sure what the failure is supposed to be. It's full of immigrants and artists and shops. I just love it. It's the liveliest bit of Kreuzberg and one of the liveliest bits of Berlin. Now, Betanien is a former hospital. 
that was abandoned in the 1970s and then became an artist's collective, a community arts collectively run centre. So the layout is still like a hospital corridor with the wards going off left and right and um, with the artist studios and the workshops in what used to be a hospital ward. We're now entering one of the printing workshops, the screen printing workshops, and you can see the artists at work. We're entering the former chapel that's now an amazing exhibition space here in Bethanien. And at the moment they're showing a group show by 10 black artists. And it's the kind of thing that I really enjoy seeing at this space and the kind of thing that I enjoy about the way Berlin changes and it attracts a younger and a more international crowd of people. The Neues Museum is an extraordinary building and it's within the complex of the so-called Museum Island in the middle of old East Berlin, teeming with tourists during the day. At night people come in, in the summer and have picnics in the grounds and um, underneath the columns by the river. It's really romantic, it's one of the few really romantic spots in Berlin. I like an old building to reflect what it's been through and it now seems to take foreigners like David Chipperfield to come here and show how that is done. Anything that's new is obviously new, and anything that's old is left as much as possible in its original, untouched state. Berlin really comes into its own in summer. The summers are short and hot here. After long, long, long winters where we have no more than three to four hours of daylight, what makes it special to me is that it's the last vestige of true anti-capitalism, funnily enough. There's no real economy, people muddle through, and you can do things here with very little money and without going to the bank and going into credit that will cripple you for the rest of your lives. Mm -hmm. 